Hello and welcome to the final whistle with me, Daniel Watson, looking back at Hibs 3 2 win over Kilmarnock at Easter Road. Coming up, James Delaney and I discuss the match, Neil Lennon speaks with Hibs TV, and we have the post match thoughts of David Gray. But first, let's remind ourselves of all the goals with Cliff Pike and Keith Reid. Stevie Mallon's moved the ball back about a foot or so, but this is definitely his, uh, his distance. Right footed round the ball. Cliff. Stand over these ones and expect them to go in. Mallon hits it, and it does! Unbelievable! Once again, Stevie Mallon, free kick, Hibs 1, Kilmarnock 0. Wonderful goal by Stevie Mallon, I didn't see right foot, it was right foot, round the wall and into the top gun of Jamie McLaren's net. It's, uh, it's getting a little bit boring now, every time Stevie Mallon gets a free kick he just sticks it in the back of the net from that distance. Be nice for him to miss one every now and again. No it wouldn't. No, no, I'm only joking, what a fabulous strike again corner will be taken right footed by Stevie Mallon flicked towards the penalty spot David Gray what a goal from Hibbs that one came from the training ground Keith you could clearly see where Stevie Mallon was looking he stuck that ball right on David Gray's head and we all know what happens when David Gray gets a header from that kind of distance. It's One, two Kelly nil. Wonderful stuff. I was just about to say that as the ball came across. David Gray just peeled off and ran, got the head on it, and right into the bottom corner of James McDonald's net. Bang. 2-0 Hibs. Oh, it's a good ball though. Chance here for Kelly. Ball comes across. It's in the back of the net. That's a great finish from Eamon Brophy. And good work down that far side. Buck. Plays the ball back, chance here for Killy. The shot will come in and it ends up in the back of the net. And Hibbs again defensively caught out, Keith. Greg Stewart giving far too much room at the edge of the 18 yard box there. And he plants it behind Adam Bogdan. And after 42 minutes, it's Hibbs 2, Killy 2. So once again, Killy have pegged back a two goal deficit. Well, won by McLaren though, he finds Camberry this time again. Swiss far edge of the 18 yard box. Tries to roll it again into the path of McLaren. He's got the penalty. Camberry plays the ball to Jamie McLaren. He hits the ground under a challenge from Kurt Broadfoot, who is apoplectic at John Beaton. There didn't look an awful lot in it. Didn't look too much in it. Kurt Broadfoot did dive in there, and I didn't think there was too much in that, to be fair, Cliff. Camberry goes right-footed into the back of the net from the Swiss striker, and Hibbs lead by three goals to two. Kelly will feel aggrieved about that. Broadfoot may just have caught the heel of Jamie McLaren and it was enough for the striker to go down. No doubt about the spot kick though. Dispatched into the bottom corner with aplomb by Flo Camberry. And after 78 minutes, Hibs 3, Kilmarnock 2. Never a dull moment between Hibs and Kelly these days. Um, it maybe didn't feel like the 100 mile an hour blood and guts game the scoreline suggested but the most important thing is it's back to winning ways I think it's a, an important win if maybe a slightly controversial one um, you know you'll you'll take that coming back off the international break um, given uh, how we went into that sort of period off um, I thought we looked a little bit better well I thought we looked a lot better today compared to Livingston although it was difficult to look much worse if we're uh, if we're honest but yeah, um, yeah you'll you'll take the three points whatever it comes and um, you know that was it felt like a bit of a, a slog at times today but the important thing is we we got there and it's a, a Saturday night we can all enjoy yeah I think at the moment whilst the the managers do their post-match stuff it'll probably be a tale of two penalties um, Jamie McLaren was brought down by Kurt Broadfoot for the winner and then an injury time Kurt Broadfoot goes down now to be fair I, th- there's no way that was a penalty for me when Broadfoot went down but we're kind of reliably informed that maybe Hibbs got a, a stroke of luck with their penalty as well yeah I mean you, you take your little bits of luck when um, when you can get them uh, you know it's it, it's one of those where I must have actually missed the McLaren one but from what I've heard possibly a little bit soft and um, Killy really I mean they have sort of two in the, the last you know, few minutes where Broadfoot goes down and there's one right on the final whistle where, where Ryan Porteous goes up and maybe another referee would look at it as being dangerous play inside the box personally I didn't think it was although to be honest everything Ryan Porteous does is dangerous isn't it so uh, <laughs> I think the lesson we've learned from today's game is don't release statements just yeah <laughs> was, are we going to release a statement just saying John Beaton was a great referee yeah I mean it's 
it's one of those where you kind of you can sit back and you go, okay, did we do enough to get the three points in that game? I think we probably did. I think we created an awful lot more than Kilmarnock did, um, even in terms of half chances and, and you know, possession in the opponent's half. I felt like we looked more dangerous going forward. Can I understand why Steve Clark would be frustrated at the end of the game with refereeing decisions, um, even without, you know the backdrop of what's gone on over the past two weeks yeah I can to be honest um, and you know feel a fit if this wasn't the uh, Hibs podcast if this was any other podcast we'd be saying you know you sympathise with him uh, but obviously we maintain a uh, you know a line of complete bias towards uh, towards Hibs on this so it's a, a good three points and definitely a penalty for I, I think before we get into the game it's obviously been a kind of big week in terms of Kilmarnock back, st- the club back in Steve Clark Steve Clark saying what he'd done um, Aberdeen then released their view of things as yeah. well um, where do you see this whole thing ending up can you just I, personally I think it'll just fizzle out and we'll continue as always um, but can you see there being any big changes or I big mean, statements out of this you can understand kind of, the frustration of, of managers and of fans of, of the club's been affected um, you know over the fir- first couple of weeks of the season who's to say in a few weeks time we're not going to be sitting here talking about a decision that's not quite gone our way um, incredibly you know wouldn't have thought Scottish football could end, get any more mental than it already is um, but now nobody really seems to be that sure of what the laws of the game are anymore and what the laws of the game are on fouling um, it seems that you can wait till there's an opponent on the ground and, and kick him um, you know, as long as it, it happens off the ball but pull somebody back 40 yards from goal um, you know, when they've still got all that ground to make up and, and that's a red card um, you know, similarly you can, you can smash them in the face with your elbow off the ball but make an honest attempt to win the ball and yeah. that's going to be a red card that it's, doesn't get rescinded so you can understand you know, where the frustration comes from and from managers from like so Steve Clark Simon Clark Stan Clark what's his name? <laughs> Steve Clark um, you can understand where the frustration comes from from those guys and, and it is something that it is ridiculous that we're now what are we what five weeks into the season five yeah. weeks into the season um, and the SFA are talking about right into the, the you know governing body uh, football's governing body and uh, for clarification on the rules um, why this wasn't done before the season started so that they could say referees right there's this zero tolerance par- policy on you know these types of challenges or, or these types of fouls um, I don't know certainly the, the case for the referees is not going to be helped um, based in this game today I don't know what's happened elsewhere in, in Scotland um, I mean it's one of those where we could rant on all night about sort of this, the standard of FD in Scotland can I see anything changing coming out of this probably not but I think it's pretty clear that some kind of change is needed yeah it's almost like we will get into the game very very shortly but it does just need someone I think there was a new compliance officer just appointed in the last few weeks so it's almost as if it just needs somebody to come in and go look let's all start afresh as of now this is it so because we can't have constant kind of to, to yeah. use a, a lovely Scottish football term what about today to well that, that's it you know and I, I mean today I imagine a lot of the post-match chat is going to be about the penalties that weren't given um, you know what that's overshadowing is two absolutely brilliant goals um, from, from Stephen Allen and, and Greg Stewart um, which are going to get lost in all that in the same way that you know there's, there's plenty of, of goals and other incidents and, and you know other brilliant bits of football and brilliant games of football that are completely overshadowed by he kicked out at him yeah but what about him kicking out at him yeah but what about that red card that you got or we didn't you know it's one of those things that it really should have been resolved by now but the sooner it is resolved the better to be honest yeah so let's get into this game then so countless changes from the poor show in Livingston a couple of weeks ago a change of formation as well um, we've gone 4-1-4-1 although I did laugh that within the first 10-15 seconds we thought Hibs were maybe playing 5 up front because yeah. as soon as the match started <laughs> Stevenson and Gray were right up there on the wings um, I don't think there'll be any surprise to see us trying out a new shape today No I, I don't think there is and I mean I think obviously with the, the injuries and the, the players that we don't have available um, Marvin Bartley's returned to fitness Paul Hanlon was out today um, obviously Ophir Marciano was out 
excuse me, Dana McGregor's just back. Mark Milligan has is, is finally got his, his work permit sorted and, and he's you know here now and, and came on. And I thought he did a, a decent job when he came on. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's understandable that with this squad and with the additions and you know the changes that we've made, you probably have to have a couple of weeks of trying out a few different things to find out your best formation. Um, so yeah, I, mean, I thought it worked well. I thought for the early part of the game today, I still think we looked a little bit light in midfield. Again, that might be something that's solved by by getting Milligan up to speed. Um, but generally, the first 10, 15, 20 minutes, I thought I thought four one four one looked good. Yeah, it was a, a kind of from both teams. It was a fairly slow, sluggish start. Kelly obviously wouldn't have been expecting the formation Hibs played. So the midfield was maybe a little bit packed out for that opening 10-15 uh, first chance I've got uh, a short corner Chris Burke is left all alone um, we'll come back to that later when we get to Kelly's equaliser his effort goes just wide to the post in fact I've put Chris Burke I think it was Greg Stewart um, but yeah 10 minutes in it's uh, Boyle's brought down in the edge of the box Stevie Marlin steps up and uh, I mean I thought at first I was critical of Jamie McDonald but having watched it back at half time yeah. that is an absolutely stunning free kick yeah I mean I think You'll, you'll see it on sports scene I don't know if they'll have the same angle on sports and hopefully they do um, but when you see it the first time that was my instinct as well is that if you're a keeper in that situation given where the free kick is um, right on the right hand side of the box you shouldn't really be getting beat at your far post but when you see the free kick from behind the goal from that shot from the south stand the whip that Stevie Mallon gets on that free kick is absolutely unbelievable like it I mean that you're talking about a ball there that's moving what about 15 yards really when yeah. it's in the air um, and going right in the top corner it's a phenomenal strike it's I mean it's incredible that we're talking you know five weeks into the into the season um, is that Stephen Mellon's best free kick that he's scored so far I think it is uh, you know his, his goal against Runovic was was good but I think that one's uh, that one's even better could he already be your top free kick goal scorer this decade I'm trying to think Ryden would only had maybe. a year or two yeah possibly Pappy Jabby no uh, no <laughs> Uh, I need to watch that on YouTube now that you said it that my little free kick again um, yeah I mean I mean we talked a lot last season about having um, our, our lack in that threat from range but every time Stevie Mallon puts the ball down now there's an expectancy and if he keeps doing that then you know fair play to him and that was a phenomenal hit and, and and one of those that you're probably watching back a few times um, over the next few days yeah so uh, from there Kelly they start to kind of get into the game a little bit they have a header that goes just wide from a corner uh, Stuart just wide uh, again all the time in the world at the edge of the box we're sick of talking about that in this podcast but we're still not even finished for this half um, and then not long after that uh Canberra does well to win a corner it's Stevie Mallon again uh, finds David Gray an absolute bullet head that he puts 2-0 up and uh, it's kind of all about the set pieces for, for Hibs and maybe something that was missing last season that we're, we're finally able to add to our game yeah three goals from three set pieces today is, um, is certainly something to take away from it um, I mean again you're know, talking about Stevie Mallon's delivery I thought it was, it was poor marking Michael Merrick I mean Gray's allowed a run on the, the ball completely unchallenged although when he does get there you know it's a good thing the net was there to stop it otherwise it would have gone right to the stand um, he's absolutely powered it into the bottom corner but yeah it, it's one of those where maybe last season we didn't really score enough from set pieces um, you know, I'm, I'm sure you can see every time we set up for a corner or a free kick there's some kind of tactic being worked um, whether that's going into the box I think we saw there you know, everybody was starting sort of far off on the left hand side of the box and then charging in um, and the, the second half we had a, a short corner which didn't really work but it was it was nice to see us try something a little bit different with, with two players standing with there no less uh, there. It, yeah, it's, it's nice to see something a little bit inventive and a little bit different um, rather than the ball just being chucked into the area every time and I thought we did look dangerous today from a few set pieces, but a couple that, you know, a different touch or, you know, a harder header or a different flick on the ball or one of those that, you know, takes three deflections, it could end up in the back of the net. So it is good to, you know, now every when we get a set piece, you could reasonably expect us to get a goal from it where that maybe didn't exist last season. Yeah, so we're 2 up at that point. You're kind of thinking, right, let's just... <sighs> hold the shape gets through to half time but it's not as if it's maybe like the Motherwell game last season 
we've maybe forgotten just how impressive Kelly have been in 2018. Yeah. I mean, they won up at Pataji a couple of weeks ago, um, and they're no mugs. Uh, they might have lost Malumbu and a couple of other players, but they've still got really talented players like Jordan Jones, Boyd's a threat to come off the bench, and Stephen O'Donnell, who's probably just off the best week of his career. Yeah. And it's him that's pivotal. It's his cross that finds Brophy to set up the their first goal. Yeah, I mean, I thought Stephen O'Donnell was excellent against Albania. I um, mean, his I don't think it was his Scotland debut, but it's maybe his first his first start. It'll be his first start certainly yeah. at Hamden. Um, no, he might have started one of the games in Peru, I thought he Mexico played or something like that. Yeah. Um, I thought he was um, phenomenal in that game, and he didn't look out of place playing international football. Which, you know, for a guy who he's sort of gone under the radar a lot, maybe not so much over the past six uh, six or twelve months, but. You know, I think when he, he re-signed for Kelly, it was one of those. I mean, it hardly sort of you know, caught people's attention, and all oh, that's an amazing signing. But the progression um, he's shown it over the past, or you know, since signing for Kilmarnock, has been excellent. The progression under Steve Clark as well. I think it speaks volumes about the impact that he's had um, on on players like O'Donnell and, and Jordan Jones, and you know, the likes of Greg Taylor. Um, so. Yeah, it it's actually rounds off a really nice pass and move, but you know, from a hips point of view, there's two or three times where the ball's gone forward and it's maybe just been you know a slightly firmer challenge would have won the ball, um, you know, going that extra yard, half yard, maybe would have intercepted a pass. It's a good goal. It's a good finish by by Brophy at the front post, but I'm sure it's one that Neil Lennon will be looking back and, and saying to his players, you know, when the ball gets into this area, we have to go up and press it, and we have to stop the chance before it actually happens, um, and it, it's something to work. On, but you know, a, a nice goal in the last. Yeah, I think it was after Kelly got the first back that I thought we really started to, to play our best football. Um, Torgan has a, a brilliant cross that there's no one but with no one's bursting a gut to get in and that's even more frustrating when you've got three attacking midfielders playing that one of Heinemann, Malin, Boyle somebody should be in that box just there to tap something home it doesn't happen Malin has an effort that goes just wide um, the Hibs have a counter attack where Daryl Horgan it's a really nicely worked counter attack there was a couple of those in this game today uh, Horgan plays in Boyle who has a scuffed effort which is really easily stopped but th- these are chances that I think Hibs should have been doing a lot more especially probably the one that Boyle has at his shots pretty tame yeah the one that goes um, Horgan puts right across the face of the goal it's one of those things you maybe sacrifice with having Camberry up front in his own and not having McLaren in there um, is when Camberry is making runs and, and holding the ball up and playing guys in it basically means that you know as soon as Horgan or Boyle or whoever it is gets out wide and the ball goes in the middle there's nobody in that area in the area that Jerry McLaren would usually play in um, you know if you're if you're looking at that chance back again with McLaren on, he is maybe there to put the defence under pressure. Um, but, you know, that's something that uh, I'm sure Neil Lennon and the rest of the coaching staff are you know, have taken into consideration. Um, the Boyle one, it looks like he's a bit off balance when he goes to hit it and he kind of he miss hits it and sort of scuffs it and goes, goes over. But I think it's... Daryl Horgan has made a real difference since uh, since signing. Um, he's very probing uh, going forward. Um, he's very quick on the counter attack. Decision making at times can be a bit um, off, but maybe only sort of one or two occasions to the, today. Uh, it was one in the second half where he, he just takes a little bit too long to play Canberry through, and um, you know it doesn't quite it doesn't quite come off in that situation, but. It, more often than not he was getting forward and making the right decisions and, and looking a threat and he's a player where if you have the right players around him he could do some serious damage yeah the one thing that's really is, is kind of a very pleasant surprise from Daryl Horgan is that the, the message from the Preston fans was that he was a good player he was a dangerous player he was a tricky player but he maybe didn't have the end product yeah. so we were maybe expecting what we seen last season in Brandon Barker at times but Daryl Horgan's got a vicious cross on him and he's scored a couple of goals already but if, uh, if that's not an end product some of the crosses he put in then Preston must be pretty spoiled down there for choices yeah I mean you wonder if it is a case of he doesn't maybe have the, the right end product for what Preston needed I mean I know they've got Louis Moult up front who is a similar striker to the likes of Canberry um, obviously he didn't come in until sort of halfway through the season last year um, and it's maybe one of those where I mean I don't know I've not watched a lot of Preston games I have to say but um you know, it's, it's maybe one of those where the two just haven't quite linked up and they haven't quite found their rhythm yet. 
but you feel you know if Horkin and Cambetti are playing together regularly and um, if they're getting used to each other's game and, and getting used to each other's movement the kind of crosses that that Daryl Horgan's putting in um, are perfect for a player like Flo Cambetti and you know for a guy like Jerry McLaren as well um, you know, it's, it's one of those where it, it's just going to take a few games for them to to get on each other's level and, and to get in each other's wavelengths but you know if we can start start creating the kind of partnership that the likes of Cambetti and McLaren already have and even you know to extend that further to the likes of Boyle um, on the right hand side that's it gives us a real attacking threat going forward more from James and I shortly but let's hear from Neil Lennon speaking with Hibs TV you know, games between Hibs and Kilmarnock always seem to throw up plenty of entertainment and that was another one it was a very high quality game of football and um, you know I was concerned going into the game you know Kilmarnock had a great win at uh, Aberdeen last last time out not many teams can go there and win as comfortably as they did so I knew we were in for a game today but we got off to a great start and then we became very very passive defensively and uh, if you do that against good sides they'll, they'll punish you and you know that's what we just said to the players at half time it wasn't as if we were playing poorly and they were the you know, two attempts on goal that Kilmarnock had first half so we got punished for you know, not being as aggressive as we could have been second half we thought we had good control of the game I thought we played well today Cliff and I thought we deserved to win similar to the game at Rugby Park last season 2-2 we were 2-0 up in that game they pegged us back to 2-2 uh, it was a controversial decision in that game led to a penalty kick they maybe felt there was a controversial one here I don't know how you saw it oh it was a penalty because Jamie's wrong side and he gets his leg taken away he's read the he's read the pass or the knockdown can't remember which it was he's got his body in the way and he's, his leg's been taken away so it was the correct decision Flo Camberry back in the starting lineup. maybe looked a wee bit rusty he let him a wee bit match sharpness but he put the penalty away well yeah but any any good moves came through Flo you know and he's such an important player for us and um, that'll give him the work his confidence is shot in the arm not that he needed because he's a confident boy but to go up there and, and take the penalty under pressure you know speaks volume for him and I'm delighted with that so that will give him you know hopefully have him up and running now because it's been a frustrating time for him as it has been for us because we miss him you know we miss that physical presence and we've had to change the system today and we've only had a few days to work on it it's still a little bit tweaks here and there that need working on Ayupong comes on does great for us thought he had a very good game Milligan comes on thought he was very good thought Whitaker in that role did very very well as well so it's been a good day all round Captain was outstanding Ambrose outstanding so a lot of good performances out there today We'll not talk about Stevie Mallon's goal because he just does that every time he gets a free kick around there but uh, it's just, you know it's world class you know to hit it you know that hard with the control into the top corner the other corner it's just world class and uh, again I thought you know, he showed a lot of things that he didn't show two weeks ago. His desire to get the ball back, his passing was good, he almost scored again. So he's having a fantastic time of for us. The second goal looked like it came straight from the training ground. Yeah, Gary Parker taking the copyright for that. And, <laughs> you know, he studied the videos and um, the movement was good, the execution was good. And it's always very pleasing when that does work. So it gave us a great start, but um, we just seemed to drop off a little bit our intensity to our play and um, you know they scored two very good goals from their point of view that said you did have to reorganise things the absence of Paul Hanlon didn't help matters you had to, to change things at the back a little bit yeah well I mean you know you always want to be flexible with your formations anyway and again I, at the minute we're a work in progress because of the changes and players getting up to speed and it's been a bit stop start with obviously Europe and then the transfer window and then this international break so hopefully things will settle down and we can get a rhythm of games now I'd be happy to get Mark Milligan in there and give him a few minutes as well he looked quite combative yeah yeah he's a man and uh, he's been very impressive in training you know he had a spell over the Australian camp and um, he's still that's his first competitive outing since the World Cup so obviously you can't just throw him in there same with Marvin you know he missed out today because it's just too soon for him but you know hopefully he'll be around it next week and the same with Darren McGregor as well so we're getting some bodies back which is obviously very pleasing and then just before half time comes the, the kind of sucker punch equaliser yet again there's a ball comes into the edge of the box next year Whitaker's close but not close enough we've said it since we started this podcast going back to what August last year yeah. we're just so guilty of affording really talented players it would be like Kilmarnock giving Stevie Mallon 
all the time and space in the world from 20 yards out and then never learning from it it comes to Greg Stewart let's take absolutely nothing away from the finish it's but the warning signs strike, were there yeah, yeah and, and they were and you know he talked about that sort of the corner to Burke I think it was in the, the first half or was that to Stewart no I think it was Burke because I then got on to the Stewart one after that oh, right, okay. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah that was obviously something that, that Kelly had pinpointed it, you know we don't necessarily have um or keep three or four players on the edge of the box at, at all times. There does seem to be that kind of gap between uh, defence and the more defensive midfielders who are you know, playing a couple of yards inside the box when Killer on the attack and the attacking players the likes of Horgan, Boyle and, and Camberry. Um, every time the ball was sort of dropping into that area, it was a Kilmarnock player that was picking it up. It's a fabulous strike by Greg Stewart, but again, it's one of those where you, you have to look at it and you have to question you know, where defensively we were um, and, and why we have switched off in that sort of situation um, you know it's it, it's not one of those that is immediately concerning but it's something that I'm sure the coaching team have, have picked up on and, and they would be working on in training well even in, in the second half I said to you there was a point where I think Kelly had a free kick it wasn't Stuart at the edge of the box I can't remember who it was now but Emerson Heinemann kind of made a point yeah he of, did he, he, sort of, he came back to cover that man so it's obviously something that's been said at half time yeah. that you know they're leaving guys on the edge of the box and you know if, if you have players like Greg Stewart and guys who can um, you know have a decent effort on goal from range then you're always going to be a threat in the same way that we are with uh, with Malin um, you know every single ball drops to 25-30 yards for a goal the entire crowd screaming for him to shoot yeah um, I thought Kelly today did a, a reasonable job of getting out to cover him, although he had a couple of half decent efforts. Um, but yeah, it, it is something that you know we, we certainly pinpointed during the game and, and something that does have to be worked on, whether it is just you know making sure we're concentrating, picking up at corners or, or having a guy like Hindman come back and, and actually stand on the edge of the box and, and pick those kind of shots up. Um, it is something that you know, we are going to need to work a bit harder at. So the second half starts with uh, a force <coughs> change. Um, I think watching back the goals at half time, we've seen that Martin Boyle was straight over at the dugout after Malin scored the free kick. So possibly had a wee knock or a niggle. He comes off, Thomas Aguipong comes on. I think we'll talk about him now in the sense that I think there's a lot to get excited about with Aguipong. Um, looked dangerous running at players. Um, had one shot that we might not talk about that <laughs> sailed way over the crossbar, <laughs> but definitely enough for a, a player there to see that he could be a major threat. His name is really fun to say as well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. that's always a plus. But yeah, he, he, he's very quick, he's very skillful. Um, at times, it, it looks like his, you know, his brain's maybe moving a little bit faster than his feet. Um, and there was a few times where he just couldn't quite sort his feet out. But um, in terms of a player to, to bring on maybe with, with half an hour to go when the opposition are tiring, there are far worse options to have. Um, you know, I think Brandon Barker said he was one of the fastest players he'd ever seen, which is not a bad it's endorsement given, yeah. uh, given how quick uh, Brandon was. But yeah, it's um, it's going to be interesting to see how he how he goes um, and and how he's used. Um, I thought he did well today. Uh, he thought he had a couple of decent runs and a, a couple of half decent chances. He had one effort in the, the second half and it gets blocked. Um, you know, a couple of sort of half uh, half breaks as well, where he was you know, getting into dangerous positions. And um, I thought defensively today tracking back you know he, he didn't do an awful lot but when he did he was at least getting a foot in and at least yep. you know making his, his presence felt and um, so there, there could be a lot to come for him like a, you know like you say it's it's nice to have the option now with Horgan Boyle and and Aggie Bob and even like of McLaren and um, to offer a little bit of pace going forward and um, but yeah certainly um, looks a, a decent sign uh, you know, from from what we've seen of him so far yeah so the second half starts with Kelly kind of similar to a couple of weeks ago set back a bit inexplicably for me they they go deep Stephen Mallon gets the first shot of the half away he capitalises on a mistake for Shibola in the middle McDonald tips it past the post Aggie Pong then has that effort we talked about it goes way over the bar Whitaker goes fairly close from a corner and then I think for the first time in my life I correctly predict a, a, a substitution we kind of we discussed whether in fact we didn't discuss whether we discussed that we had to have an extra body up front if yeah. we wanted to win the game so we take off Whitaker we take off Heinemann we put on Milligan and McLaren that puts us a flat 4-4-2 and uh, a sub that just made sense yeah uh, there was a few times today where you kind of looked at Canberra and you looked a little bit isolated um, you know it, it was very similar to the first six months of last season yeah it was, it was a moment where Canberra does well to give 
Stevenson are hogging the ball in the wing and that's all well and good but there's now nobody, nobody in, in the, the box middle. yeah um, and, and that was it he was having to come sort of deeper or, or he was having to come out wide and get the ball which you know like you say it just leaves us with a big gap um, in the middle um, it's good to see McLaren get on again you know Cambay and McLaren this season haven't played together an awful lot so it is going to take them you know, a game or two to get back on the same wavelength but I thought we saw it today um, you know once McLaren came on they, they had started linking up a little bit there was a few kind of flick-ons that they both got to there's one where it's, it's Horgan as what we were talking about earlier Horgan, McLaren and, and Camberi going through and takes Horgan a little bit longer perhaps than he should have to yeah. play Camberi through but as soon as Camberi gets the ball he's forced a little bit wide he's immediately looking for McLaren he's a little bit unlucky maybe not to get the ball through to him um, so yeah it's, it's good to see them get back Milligan I thought did his job well um, when he came on uh, he, he didn't sort of have a, an awful lot to do but he made a couple of couple of decent interceptions and a couple of decent tackles looks very comfortable on the ball um, I think the most encouraging thing I've seen in Matt Milligan's display was not long after we went 3-2 up I think we had a goal kick and it's Milligan in the middle of the park barking instructions yeah. so this guy's only met up with the team a couple of weeks ago but he's using that experience to bark orders at the rest of them yeah I mean you don't play a Seventy games internationally uh, for any country without picking up a little bit of experience, and for a guy who is you know, 32, 33 years old, um, he's going to have a lot of young players around him. Uh, you know, I think he came in for what Hindman. Yeah. Um, so I mean, he's playing in the centre of the pitch with, with Stevie Mellon, who's what 21, 22. Yeah. Um, you know. It, He's marshalling uh, a defence that's got Ryan Porteous in it, who, um, even though he is a destroyer, is still only 19. Um, you know, so it is going to be one of those where he's probably going to be, you know, mentoring almost a, a few of the players in the middle. If he's playing up with the likes of Malin and Hindman, um, you know, guys who could learn a lot from from him. So it, it was encouraging to to see him on and to see him, you know, not be daunted at barking instructions at his teammates again this is a guy who <laughs> it feels like we've been saying this a lot recently but probably hasn't trained all that much with yeah, with yeah. the team I know he was away in the, in the Australian camp what, what Tuesday would have been his yeah, first day Tuesday Wednesday um, and then even then he was doing press for yeah, exactly. some yeah. um, you know, I think having a guy like McLaren there who he obviously knows quite well and, and helping him to integrate um you know, it's going to be beneficial, but early signs are good. Um, be be nice to see him get a start next week against Dundee, and you know, there's plenty of games coming up for him to, to bed in. Yeah, and uh, so to go through the rest of the second half chances, Aggie Pong has an effort blocked. There's about six or seven Kelly players between him and the goal. Um, Horgan, the breakaway that you discussed, I agree with you, held on it for too long. Um, and then the penalty comes, uh, Broadfoot brings down McLaren. <coughs> There was, given the incidents just in building up to that that half chance that you just mentioned with Horgan, I thought Canberra could have taken a shot on. There was yeah. one before it where he looked for a pass when there was a shot on. So when he stood up for the penalty, I'm thinking, oh no, is he feeling like, confident here? But made me <coughs> shut up yet again. Great penalty. Yeah, I mean, has Flo missed a penalty for us since he's been here? I don't think he has. He hasn't. Has he's he? won against Runovic, probably didn't deserve to go in. Yeah. But. <laughs> He's, um, he'll have scored them all but I mean it's penalty his last season against Hearts at Tynecastle so that'll be his fourth for us now yeah Rangers here Hearts, Rangers he right in the top corner today um, brilliant penalty uh, he puts it right in the corner and, and even with McDonald going the right way um, there's absolutely no chance of him getting it um, great strike like I say you know we, we mentioned the fact that I didn't actually see uh, the, the McLaren incident I'd like to see it back but um, very good penalty by by Flo Camberry and he looked like a player that, you know, even though it didn't happen for him a lot of the times today, didn't look uh, daunted by it, didn't look to lose confidence and, and could see him back amongst the goals. Yeah, so, I mean, immediately after that, Kelly bring on Chris Boyd. Um, we know only too well about Chris Boyd and the threat that he brings. We've used all our subs, so it's kind of 4-4-2 with two attacking wingers. You're expecting a sort of siege, and for a couple of minutes after the goal, it looked that way, but generally, I've seen it out fairly comfortably, I thought... Um, Boyd had a header that Bogdan done well to tip over the bar. Was that. It, was, it looked uh, like it sort of took. I think um, it deflected off Gray, maybe. It, it comes off before. Boyd's head and hits Gray's shoulder. Um, so it's, it's good reactions from Bogdan to sort of yeah. spill it over the bar. It takes us 83 minutes before we get a classic Ryan Porteous tackle, but uh, the ball surviving this one. See uh, the, when the day comes that he gets a red card, which he <laughs> will win on appeal. Um, yeah. It's going to be <laughs> some. I mean, somebody's going to lose a leg. Well, I mean, it's. You know, you never want to see players getting hurt, 
but at the same time <laughs> <laughs> I always want to see that Ryan Portress like tackle I feel like if we don't get it at least once during the game it, it feels like I've been deprived of, uh, of some entertainment um, I think it's it's Burn that he goes to just come on um, which was a, a bit of an introduction to Scottish football for him um, but first derby of the seasons at Tynecastle isn't it yeah yeah it's okay. going to be an interesting one <laughs> uh, but yeah a cracking tackle from uh, from Portress um, won the ball as well um, and like I say the ball surviving this time uh, where it didn't in, uh, in the Netherlands uh, during the week um, but yeah fair play long may it continue yeah uh, so uh, another kind of nicely worked counter attack leads to Horgan putting one just over the bar the penalty incidents that we've discussed happened and then and uh, yeah that, that will keep us I think about 5th or 6th in the league and now here's the post-match thoughts of David Gray talking to Cliff David a hard fought battle today but a good 3 points yeah I'm also disappointed when we go 2-0 up to, for it to be as close as it was but delighted to get 3 points in the end so it's fantastic we look at the goals there Stevie Mallon we just we don't talk about him anymore he just sticks them in the, the back of the net for fun no he's, he's, he does practice them and to be honest he does that all the time in training as well so you always know if you get, a, you get him within 25 yards of the goal there's always a, a right chance the goalkeeper will be working anyway so no he's done fantastic since he's came in and he's a, a real uh, been a real good addition to the squad and he put one right on a plate for you for the second one you'll be delighted with that one yourself yeah we, to be honest we worked on that yesterday in training so uh, it was one that we worked on and uh, well, so I was delighted to get on the end it was a great ball for him and happy to see you going about in it it's always nice I guess when you spend time working on these moves in training and they actually come off in a big game yeah definitely um, the manager does work hard on them he says you know what it's like we, we lost a goal a couple of weeks ago from set plays and he, he drums it into us every week you live and die by set pieces and um, obviously we tightened up a little bit defensively from them today and then it was great to go and score at the other end as well so the manager will be happy with that and it's um, move on to Dundee now Mirrors of the game against Kilmarnock at Rugby Park last season though we were 2-0 up in that game and they pegged us back that time we couldn't get the winning goal but today we did no, I think it shows our character as well. I think um, there was maybe a bit of a question mark over for the last week's performance. We were always really disappointed um, with the result last week, especially taking the lead in the game and then uh, Livingston pegging us back and then going and losing the game was disappointing. So we, we knew we were under a bit of pressure to put a performance in. Um, and I think, it sh- we, again, we showed great character. And, um, we can only take confidence from the day coming back to pegging us back to 2-2, getting a little bit deflated for 5-10 minutes and then really coming again. I thought we'd, we sort of dominated the game from then on and we deserved the win. Certainly entertaining in games between the two sides and they, they throw up talking points I don't think the Kelly boys were over happy with the penalty that was given but maybe it evens up the one they got when Ryan Portis was penalised through there last season uh, to be honest I'm not too sure I, I, I was quite far away for the one uh, today um, I don't think the defender really knows he's there so it's one of the ones that I think you see them given quite often um, obviously Delighty Flo was managed to put it away and then it's just that's up to the referee the referee makes these decisions but I thought we were good value for the three points in the end I thought we dominated the game um, apart from the two goals which they took quite well we were disappointed to lose them but apart from that I think we felt pretty comfortable defensively so. as, you've, oh, sorry, as you said David the, the confidence in the, amongst the team is good we peg back to 2-2 but there's always that never say die attitude you know I've seen us go behind in games but we just roll the sleeves up and get on with it and that, that does help the confidence definitely I think we've kind of said that today it would be nice to go up to take the lead in the game there's been a couple of times now we've lost the first goal and we're up chasing it uh, up against it a little bit but it was nice to score first and then to go 2-0 up I think we maybe just took a foot off the pedal a little bit which is obviously at this level you're going to get punished and um, credit to come on they came out and they scored two goals off the back of it um, but like you say it shows good, good character that we managed to go and win the game and a wee bit different for yourself and Lewis Stevenson today playing a sort of flat back four rather than the 3-5-2 formation how did you adjust to that? Yeah I enjoyed it I think obviously predominantly played most of my career as a full back so um, and I think the way the manager wants to play we can still get forward from there um, and it sort of gives us more of a chance to get more natural wingers on the pitch as well so it's just it's, it's great to have the, the flexibility in the squad now um, last season we were always a sort of 3-5-2 um, but we've now got more than one string to our ball we can, we can go with wingers we can then obviously and at other times we can change it and go back to a three we've got real strength and depth in the squad now and the manager um, will have a decision to make every week on who he wants to play which is great and it's certainly the way the fans want to see the game played wing backs wingers wide men getting crosses in creating chances great entertainment I'd rather it was 1-0 like, 
tight, to be honest. God, um, we get judged on clean sheets, to be honest. So I'd, I'd rather be tightened up a little bit. We shouldn't need to score three and four goals every week to win games. But it's great that we're scoring goals and creating chances. So it's great. As long as we get the three points, that's all that counts. To talk about the atmosphere at some point, they asked you the question. It was a fairly flat atmosphere. Um, yeah. uh, much of that, all right, the performance against Levy wasn't great. But that was an entertaining match today. Is there an element, do you think, of because hearts are going so well that that's adding a bit of pressure onto Hibs inadvertently? Um, I think there is. You, you know, I mean, it's like in any sort of two-team city. You know, if if one team is doing well, the other one is is maybe sort of looking up and, and having to step up. I mean, we can't sort of go and, and judge our season by how Hearts are doing, um, because you know that's completely pointless and it, it doesn't necessarily help us. Um, you know, in the the same way that they had a fantastic start to the season and won their first five games um, you know they didn't have a European campaign to play yep. um, they didn't get that this season um, you know they didn't get their, their night in Greece or, or their night here coming back from a couple of goals yeah, down they're, so they're a, a strange SFA decision away from being exactly, out of the League know, Cup as well it's a it, it, it's one of those where it's <sighs> It's kind of swings and roundabouts almost. You know, you kind of you take you know, Hearts winning five games in a row as as Hearts winning five games in a row. We've not played them yet. Um, you know, we've not matched up against them yet. We just have to keep keep winning, and uh, we just have to keep doing what we're doing. And when it does come to, to Halloween, which you, know, you look to think the guy who's doing the fixture is having a bit of a laugh with that one, but. Uh, you know, we can only only judge ourselves by by how we do um, judge yourself against Hearts by how we play against them. You know, during that 90 minutes at Tynecastle, the atmosphere today, I think, the Livingston game certainly didn't help. Um, you know, I, I don't want to sort of go on about it too much because I think we probably said enough <laughs> yeah, after yeah. the game. But it was one of those where it, it seemed like such a you know, a kick in the gut to lose that and, and lose that in the way we did and, and put in the kind of performance that we did um, also coming back off the international break um, you, know, you almost feel like because Scotland won maybe people haven't had quite enough time to be like oh god I cannot wait till the, yeah, the real football's, football's back, back. Uh, I think when you look at the Levy game now with looking at today David Gray missed that game he scores the goal it makes 2-0 Flo Camberry missed that game he scores the penalty that puts us that gives us the win uh, you've got Danny McGregor on the bench you've got Mark Milligan on the bench Marvin Bartley's not far away from returning um, so I think we can get much like the Hamilton game at the start of last season it's one that you very quickly have to just put to the back of your minds yeah. and uh, the stronger that we get the more time that we play together it's probably not the we we were saying looking at the score at Ibrox today you didn't want Dundee to lose by 6 or 7 because yeah. in the nicest most respectful way that you can say this you want an under pressure manager to still be in the dugout when you next play them look at St Mirren last night change of manager they bring in a magician for a day and all of a sudden they get a 0-0 draw against the champions so um, yeah you want uh, Kenny Miller's going to be suspended next week a manager under pressure in the dugout and that's the kind of game that you want to go and, and build on yeah I've not seen the Kenny Miller challenge obviously if it is off the ball it will get uh, rescinded <laughs> and he will be able to play so um, but yeah you know I mean there aren't any easy games in this division um you know, depending on how well Neil McCann has a hold of the dressing room, um, they're going to be digging in. Um, you know, it's it's never easy going to Dens Park. It's not a ground that personally I particularly enjoy going to, but it is probably, if you're looking at it on paper, a good time to play Dundee. Um, in the same way that it's, it's actually a decent run of fixtures that we have um, up until October which is horrible uh, to be honest uh, we play Dundee we've got Aberdeen here in the League Cup which um, is a, a chance to uh, to progress in the in that competition yep especially um, given Aberdeen's current given Aberdeen's form, current yeah. current form as well I imagine there'll be a few changes for that game for, for both sides um, it should be a, a really entertaining game under the lights here um, go away to St Mirren who you know, obviously had a, a decent start for Oren Kearney um, last night but haven't been uh, you know, spectacular in the, the first few weeks of the season so yeah, it's one of those where yeah, you, you know, you probably are looking at that game against Dundee next season and, and there's a game against Dundee next week and, you know, thinking that's a, 
a good place to start. Yeah, it's a good place to pick up a, a three points away from home. Um, but yeah, we still have to show up. We still have to put in a performance. And like I say, you know, good things come to those who wait. So that'll do us for this week's episode. The extended highlights from Saturday are now available with the rest of this season's matches as well as a huge archive of other classics all on Hibs TV. Next up for us is a trip to Dens Park to face Dundee on Saturday. Tickets are now available on general sale for that one. Until next time, my thanks to James Delaney as always for joining me. Massive thank you for listening and join us next time on The Final Whistle.